Hello, welcome back to Practical Simulation, where we establish relationship between practical and natural theories. Okay, so now in this um, video, we are going to be looking at uh, a simple experiment on uh, oscillating spiral spring. Okay, uh, we've actually treated uh, the one of um, simple pendulum. So we are going to look at another oscillation. Uh, Okay, and this time around, it's going to be a spiral spring experiment. Okay, so as usual, we are, I'm going to show you the relationship that exists between the practical that you conduct and, the, of course, the theory that, that validates that practical. And I also told you that if I told you that uh, if you know exactly how to actually manipulate the the uh, the theoretical formula, you can actually um, uh, you can validate your practical or you can even use the theoretical formula to um, take the values, take your reading and of course you have uh, you can, the, you, you, there's going to be an accurate, you're going to have an accurate value, okay? You're going to have an accurate because in that uh, the, the formula you're going to be using is already, it, is, it has already been proven, okay? And that it is, uh, it, will go, it is has the tendency of producing more accurate results than just than the practicals because the, the practicals is actually prone to errors okay um measurement error standard error different kind of error okay so now we are looking at a uh, oscillating spring which of course is a spiral spring okay so now and uh, of course you'll be asked to evaluate the period of the spiral spring now this is the setup of the experiment okay now uh the way the experiment works is this you actually be uh you be asked to place a mouse on a spiral spring then by placing the mouse on the spiral spring you you, you notice that there's going to be an extension okay this mouse will pull on the spring okay and produce uh and a bit of an extension but you need to set the spring into oscillation so you have to actually displace the mass downward a bit okay pull on the mass okay for some displacement and then allow it to oscillate okay and of course um, for some number of oscillation you will be asked to measure the period okay to measure the period to measure the, uh, of course before you measure the period you you have to measure the time so for the for the oscillation as usual the apparatus okay the apparatus for this uh, experiment okay includes the retort stand retort stand we will definitely need clamp, okay? We need stop watch, okay? Number four, we need spiral spring, okay? Of a particular spring constant, then we need the uh, masses. So in this case now, uh, unlike the simple pendulum, we vary the, the length. Here, what we are going to vary is the mass, okay? Now, from the formula, okay, from the formula of the period of, the period of an oscillating spiral spring, okay, you notice that the period is directly proportional to the mass. The period is directly proportional to the mass. So uh, let me step that formula again. The period. The period. Is equal to 2 pi the square root of m all over k so from here now we okay you can see that the period is directly proportional to the square root of the mass okay so now the the question is uh what 
um, what values do you need for this experiment? Okay, what are the values that we actually fill your table, your table of values? Okay, now you definitely be asked to conduct the practical, and the, the table is going to be in this. The table. Okay, so this is our serial number. So this is going to be the mass measured in grams. Here you have the time for a particular number of oscillation. You have the period which of course is equal to the time divided by that number of oscillation, also measured in seconds. Then uh, you will also be asked to evaluate the period square measured in seconds square. Okay, so for, let's say, let's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. 20.0, 30.0, 40.0, grams, 60.0 grams, then 70.0 grams. Okay, so now this time around, what do, how do we actually, okay, how do we take our reading theoretically? Now I'll tell you how. But, um, there's going to be a kind of a slight, there's going to be a slight difference, okay? Unlike uh, what we did on how we got our reading for that of the simple pendulum that we just needed, okay? We we we, we needed just the length because every other, every other parameter, okay, are constant. Uh, for the simple pendulum, remember for the, uh, the simple pendulum, we have two pi, it's 2 pi squared of L over G. 2 pi and G, they are constant. We know the constant value, okay? But in this case now, we have two constant, 2 pi and K. But K is not K, depends on the spring. Unlike G, okay, being the assertion due to gravity is constant for anywhere you find yourself on Earth, right? But the K this time around depends on the spring constant. So that simply means that for you to actually conduct this practical, for this practical, okay, to be possible theoretically, you need to get the constant of the spring because each spiral spring have a particular spring constant, okay? So now the question is, how do you actually get this constant of the spring? It's very easy. You can just uh, apply apply Hooke's law to get that. Remember Hooke's law said that uh, force is equal to ke so all you just need to do is just find a particular load okay a no mass let's say a mass of uh, of 20 grams okay then place it on that spiral spring and measure the length of the extension once you measure the length of the extension then you can get the spring constant by dividing the weight mg by the extension you got and make sure you convert everything to meter and of course Okay, everything should be in the SI unit. So that way you'll be able to get the particular constant. And that is all you need. Once you have the constant for this, for that spring, okay, the rest of the practical, the formula will actually do justice to it. So while others are actually struggling, okay, now this is not a substitute. I'm not telling you not to conduct practical, but just in case, okay, when you know this, it is very easy for you to know, okay, uh, if what you're doing is actually right or wrong. In the laboratory okay so so that when people actually get their readings and you can actually use this formula to confirm it so we are going to populate our table using this formula so now the spring constant the one okay basically used in the laboratory okay is uh ranges from 5 to 20 uh, newton per meter so we are going to use the one a spring let's say we we are going to this practical is being conducted by a spring whose constant is 5 Newton P 
perimeter. All right, so let's start. Okay, if that is the five newton per meter, let's look at uh, when the length is equal to 20, 20 cm. If the length is equal to 20 cm, then we are going to have the period to be equal to 2 pi, which of course is 6.28, the square root of um, 20 cm. You have to convert 20 cm to kilograms. So that's going to be 0 0.02 this time around then divided by the constant 5. Please pardon me. Okay, so calculator will help us this time around. So I'm having 0 0.02. Or better still let me use a okay for me to be at a very safe side let me use let me use a k to be 10 okay um for me to make my calculation easier much easier let me let's use k to be 10 newton per meter all right you can choose any value if you wish but i just want to make my calculation to be easy so that i will not have to be consulting calculator for everything i'm calculating Okay, so um, so if that being the case, then that simply means that the, my the square root now will end up being okay, uh, zero point zero 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 two. Okay, so let's do that. Zero. Okay, zero zero point zero 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 two square root then multiply by six point two eight okay so zero point zero 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 nine approximately so we will have okay um something similar to what we had before but in um, in two decimal three decimal, three decimal places okay all right let's proceed so when l is 30 the period will be 6.28 then the square root of 0 0.0003 okay so i believe that uh, with what we actually what we did with what we did uh, in uh, the experiment of the simple pendulum i'm very sure that you'll be able to okay so let me give you the opportunity to actually populate this table when you populate this table okay you draw the graph now let's actually look at the implication of the graph the same okay the implication of the graph is uh we know that t, uh, the period of a spiral spring is 2 pi l all over g okay 2 pi please pardon me that is that of sp m all over k so squaring both sides converting it to a straight line equation So I'll have t squared is equal to 4 pi, 4 pi squared, then m all over k. So with this comparison, with this comparison now, okay, we can actually see that uh, comparing it with uh, y is equal to mx plus c, okay, we are drawing a graph of t square against m so m is the horizontal as the circle so m is actually equivalent to x so if m is equivalent to say that is m which if m here the mass is equivalent to uh, x that means this slope okay 
our slope, which of course is same as M for the straight line, is going to be equal to 4 pi square. So that is, with this particular formula now, the graph you'll be asked, okay, to actually find this, the, uh, your spring constant, okay? So to actually, to prove that your, your, your experiment was actually correct, to get the spring constant, now the spring constant is going to be equal to uh, 4 pi square divided by the slope of your graph. So that will be the spring constant. So I want to give you the opportunity to investigate this. Okay, so choose a particular spring constant. All right, uh, create the table, draw the graph, evaluate your slope, then calculate the spring constant. So if what you have is close, is approximately the spring, uh, this, uh, this, the spring constant you actually use to populate your table, that simply means that your graph is correct. All right, so I will see you in the next video. All right, so see you in the next video. Thank you very much.